What's up everybody? Today we're going to be checking out uh, what kind of hash rate we can get on the 3060 Ti light hash rate on uh, Ergo, so the Auto Lycos 2 algorithm. Um, and we're going to be setting up a, uh, a Ergo wallet and then uh, mining with a mining pool. Uh, so we'll see how that goes with the light hash rate card. We'll see if it's affected, uh, if it's greatly affected, slightly affected, or not affected at all. Uh, yeah, and um, one more thing. Is we got another uh, 1660 Super. Uh, I sold off the 1070 I had in my first rig and upgraded it to the 1660 Super. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a 1660 Super of almost each type now. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'm going to get this guy installed in my first rig and up in hashing. And I also picked up this. So the power meter I don't think I'll use in this video. Probably save it for another time. But uh, I just want to be able to see how much I'm pulling. Um, you can see my... my switch back there ethernet switch and uh, the power bar it's probably not recommended to do this but um the cable doesn't get hot nothing gets hot and everything works fine so uh yeah i mean if it i guess if it's not broken don't fix it but yeah um i think you're better off on the safe side so anyway here we go there's the aces card so luckily this card is longer and I mean, fatter in this sense uh, than any other uh, 1660 Supers I have. So I did not have to switch over um, this bar, uh, luckily. I thought I was going to have to, and the Vetter frames, I don't know. The, the one I got is used, and these things are all broken, so I had to tape them. I don't know if you can see that properly with electrical tape. So just to take this off would have been a pain in the ass. It's the exact same thing on the other side, too. So, yeah, anyway, it's, it's in there. And uh, <clears throat> let me show you. So I, I wasn't able to overclock it as, as high as my other cards. Um, I have it doing 31.32 mega hash, which isn't bad. But I'm, I mean, on all my others, I get 31 and a half or more. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the way I go about overclocking this, uh, or I mean, in this case, a 1660 Super, since I have a bunch of them, is I know there's basically two types of overclocks that work. Either you go... Um, all the way negative on uh, the memory clock, so normally minus 502. Um, and if your hash rate doesn't go up to 30 or something like that, uh, normally it's the other way and you have to uh, push your, your memory clock as high as possible. So normally I start at about 900 or 1000, see what that gives. Usually that's right on the money and you get about, you know, your top performance. And the core clock is, I mean, it's not even usually a question, I just do the locked core clock. I think at 1000 or 1050. Um, so in that sense, it's not hard. I said to that and I just play with the uh, memory clock until I optimize it. So, so that's good. I mean, uh, pulling less power, producing more on, uh, on this rig now since I changed the 1070 to the 1660 Super. So happy about that move. And uh, maybe I'll try and do the same with, uh, with the 1080 and the 1060 here in this rig. I'm not sure. I wanted to do an EVGA rig, but I guess that idea went out the window now. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway. Uh, let's get back to, uh, to Ergo. Let me switch over to this PC, try a different, uh, different sort of style video here, and uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so from here, you're going to want to go to ergoplatform.org. This is uh, the official Ergo website. From here, you can find all the resources you're going to need uh, to I mean, mine Ergo, find a pool, set up wallet, all that stuff. So go to individuals, and then you'll have wallets. And here it gives you the... Uh, the options. So there's uh, the Ergo desktop wallet, all right, and the Ergo uh, Android wallet. This is actually fairly new from what I've seen. Um, and then the web wallet, which is Yoroi or Yuri or however you pronounce this. Um, just for ease of use, I'm going to be going with the web wallet. I have not tried either of these, but they might be a better option. So um, I'm just not informed enough, honestly. Uh, so for now, I'm going to go with this. Um, here at this point, uh, you can download it for Chrome. Um, I already I already did it. I haven't set up anything else, but I already downloaded this. So download the extension for Chrome. I would have liked to seen this for Brave Browser. That's what I would have done. But um, I mean, out of these, I'll definitely pick Chrome. Um, <coughs> once you've done that, installed it, um, go to your extensions, and you can open the wallet from there. Uh, at this point, you're going to go through the whole setup process. Um, I won't take you through this. I mean... It's, um, it's, 
it's it's fairly straightforward. I'll I'll go through this stuff, but I mean the your password, the recovery seed, all that I I will skip. Um, eh, it was not able to skip. It's okay. Um, so I want to create a wallet, an Ergo wallet, and this is where I will cut off. So you guys can enter your wallet name you want, um, your password, and then it'll give you a recovery seed uh, of which you'll have to write down. Make sure you write that down. Uh, Make multiple hard copies of it, not on your computer. Write it down on a piece of paper or something. If you have a safe, put it in a safe. Make sure they're in different locations in case one, you know, something happens to one of them. Um, be safe with these keys. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get that done and uh, I'll show you the result afterwards. Okay, so once you've done all that, you're brought to this page. And, uh, I mean, I'll let you guys explore the app. Uh, I'm going to do this after. Uh, if you want to send, you'll go in this tab. Uh, you, we obviously want to receive, right? You can see here I have zero ergo, and you can see I just have a standard wallet here. Go to receive, and this is your wallet address. So in the miner, we're going to need to uh, put this so that obviously we receive the ergo we mine. So uh, I will copy this. I know the next step will be uh, selecting a mining pool before we set up our batch file in T-Rex Miner. Um, so for that, I would always recommend um, you go over to miningpoolstats.stream and you select um, whatever crypto you're looking into. So in this case, uh, here's slash ergo. And you can see the top pools here uh, for ergo. Um, normally, I'd like to stick to, you know, somewhere in the top pools, uh, one with you know, low pool fees, ideally. Uh, so in this case, just looking quickly without, you know, going into the details of each pool, um, you can see that, well, nano pool and hero miners are probably the two biggest. Um, and well, here, this is Chinese pool, uh, willypully.com pool, and uh, obviously some others. Uh, I think we're just going to go with hero miners. Um, the reason why is because, well, number one, it's the second uh, biggest pool. And it also has the lowest pool fees here. So um, in that sense, I see basically 1% less here. So I think I'm gonna go with Hero Miners. You can just click on it and here um, you will get probably all the information you need. So uh, let's go in the start tab here, I guess. Um, and here we go. So we're gonna choose our mining server. Um, I'm gonna go with the Canadian one because I'm in Canada. So this is the server we're gonna choose. Um, you have your options for solo mining and difficulty. Um, I won't go into that here. Uh, I'll have to do my own research again on this. Um, and here we go. Here is T-Rex Miner. So we'll select that. And it'll tell you uh, there should already be a batch file for that in the latest version of T-Rex Miner, which I, I have. Um, so basically, I'll just have to put in um, the mining server here, right? My wallet address, my worker name, uh, exactly like this. So this should not be very complicated. Uh, basically, just set it up based on which area you're in, choose your server, and then get the miner. I mean, uh, there are a lot of miners here. I used to use Lull Miner for all my Ethereum mining. I moved to T-Rex Miner afterwards. I, I find it better, but I know a lot of people go with NB Miner for Ergo. Just uh, I'm going to use what I already have. So um, I will open up the batch file and uh, start putting in the information. All right, so in the batch file, um, I already have placed here my, my Ergo address and uh, the worker name. Um, that's all basically you have to change here and you should add in the prefix for your location. That's it. That's all you should need to change in, in the batch file. Um, so at this point I will try and get the miner up and running with T-Rex. Um, we'll see what that gives. And on the other side here, we'll open up MSI afterburner. So, um, I'll let this, you know, uh, start up. I'll get, check back with you guys and uh, we'll get overclocking. All right, so you can see that, you know, right out of the box at everything stock here, uh, we stabilized on 108 mega hash. Um, I, I, t I tested it for a bit more time here. I just restarted the miner, but it, it's around 108, 109 mega hash. Um, but I don't have anything else running. Um, I just set the fan temp, or sorry, fan control to 85%. Uh, we're pulling about 160 watts now. Uh, I was pulling about, about 170 before, so I think it'll stabilize more around that. Um, and we'll start overclocking. So um, number one is shout out to Finn Septech. 
uh, channel. I mean, he basically taught me everything I know uh, about how to overclock. When I first started GPU mining, I watched his videos on like the 10 series cards, 1660 supers, uh, and his method that I'm about to show you guys on uh, how to overclock the cards uh, to find, you know, the optimal point and all that. So uh, what I'll normally start doing uh, is taking the memory clock all the way down and applying that. Um, we'll leave it some time to stabilize. We'll see what it does. And um, I will always leave the power limit the same during all my testing. Uh, normally, I like to leave it at 100. Um, the reason for that is because you want to just have two variables, right, being the core clock and the memory clock um, at a time with a constant power limit instead of kind of changing all three and then having three variables in the mix uh, to finding your, your optimal more or, I mean, the optimal in terms of yield solution and in terms of efficiency solution, right? Depends what you want. Uh, depends on your cost of electricity. For everybody, it's going to be different. Um, and then from there, after once you find your kind of your, your best point for overclocking with your core clock and memory clock, you can take down the power limit to either get to that, you know, uh, ultimate production or to the mo most efficient uh, yield. I mean, <clears throat> most of the time, Getting the highest efficiency number you see here is not going to make you the most money um, because normally your electric cost relative to the cost of the coin you're mining is very small, is only a certain percentage. Um, so most of the time it'll be better, I mean, if you can afford to pay for the electricity, to just go for more yield in terms of coin even though it'll lower your efficiency a little bit. Um, as an engineer that kind of hurts me to do that. but. I mean, numbers don't lie, and uh, when it hits your wallet, um, I mean, a lot more will hit your wallet versus what will show on the electric bill. So uh, for me, it's it's well worth it. And you can see here, our I mean, our mega hash is just dropping. So right away, this is not a good idea. I'm going to try the opposite. I'm going to go to uh, 500 memory clock. Again, I'll leave everything else the same. Um, I'll leave it a bit of time to stabilize, and I'll get back to you guys uh, with the result of this. All right, so we seem to stabilize around 119 mega hash here, we're pulling a bit more, 180 watts. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to push the memory clock a bit more. I'm going to try and go up to 800 because I know I can get, you know, well over 1,000 if I look over my, ra my uh, or sorry, I get 1,000 if I look at my Raven overclocks for this card. Um, so I'm going to go up to 800 next, and I think I'll push it to 1,000 because it's it's stable at that. Um, we'll see what it does on Ergo here. Um it always seems to, whenever I change the overclocks, it seems to drop and then kind of pick back up and stabilize afterwards. So again, I'll I'll let it stabilize, I'll come back, and then I think we'll, depending on what we get, we'll pump up the memory clock to 1,000, and then we'll start playing with the core clock. Uh, so yeah, I'll get back to you guys. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it seems like it stabilized around 125 mega hash. As soon as I start recording, it drops, but we didn't get much more, five more mega hash. Um, I mean, right away, I'm going to show you guys one thing. Uh, if you go here in uh, in your batch file and you use this command here, you can set a uh, target temperature for your fan. So I'm just going to change this hard-coded fan, fan percentage to a temperature target, and we'll restart the miner, um, and we'll, we'll get that going again. But uh, I just want to say before, um, from what I saw, we should be able to get uh, from what to mine, and what to mine usually gives pretty conservative estimates. Uh, we should be getting 155 mega hash on Ergo for about 130 watts. So right now we're far from there. Um, I'm going to close up the miner, and I'm going to I'm going to set the memory clock directly in the miner as well uh, to a thousand. So I'll show you that too. So you're just going to type in double dash m clock, and then set your value. That's all we need to do. So, like I said, I'll restart the miner, I'll see what it stabilizes at now, first time, and uh, then we'll get into playing with the core clock and the power limit. Okay, guys, I'm getting really, really weird results here. I, I started it on 1,000. Uh, I was only at 110 mega hash, whereas at, like, 500 or whatever it was, I was at 125. So I boosted it up to 700, and or, or down from 1,000, I guess, to 700, and we're just going lower. So... I don't know. It's like inconsistent results. Like if I set it back to 500, will we get back what we had before? It's <sighs> something's weird. Like it seems like the light hash rate cards are affected on Ergo, but it's not like it's not obvious. Um, sometimes too, like well, <sighs> it's actually just an example. But look at the fan speed profile here. I had a similar thing for a while go on with the power, where the power would kind of go up 
up and down and up and down and up and down. And it wouldn't really affect the hash rate, but at a certain point, it was like that. Um, so I'm I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to give it some time to stabilize again at just plus 500. And um, if not, I think I'm going to play with the core clock next and maybe try you know, lock core clock because, I mean, if I can't even get it up to like 150 mega hash, I mean, what's the point of power limiting it? limiting it excuse me so i mean if i can't get this to work properly i'm just gonna hop back to raven that was the plan anyway but um yeah it's it's quite strange like i said i'm i'm probably just gonna cut back with the conclusion uh, i'm gonna test out a bunch of different things um and we'll see what we can optimize this to but it's it's pretty strange um like i said see we're we're at 104 for some reason i was at 120 something with these same overclocks i believe unless i'm not remembering correctly but uh, yeah, I'll play with it some more. I'll, go, I'll get back to you guys and uh, we'll see what it gives. All right, guys. So um, after honestly a long time of testing, um, this is the best I could get it at. Um, so now it's dropping because I started recording, but about 127, 128 mega hash at about 108, 109 watts. Um, now I'm going to say it's definitely affected. So these light hash rate cards are definitely affected on Ergo, the Auto Lycos 2 algorithm. Um, from what I read online, um, you can get up you know, from 160 to 170 mega hash normally on these cards. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not the first report of a card getting in the range of you know, 130, 125 mega hash. Um, and it's pretty sad because like that's something... From what I read, that 3060s do about the same hash rate. So uh, it seems, I mean, it it seems like it's hit harder um, than I thought, the uh, Ergo algorithm from the light hash rate, unfortunately. But my plan was always to mine Ravencoin anyway. Um, and you can see it's just, it's strange. It's really, really dropping now when I'm recording. But anyway, yeah, um, this is the best I can get it. I'm running, um, here, I'll show you the settings. It's a uh, 1,000 memory. I pushed it as far as I could. I have the core clock set to minus 100, power level 55. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could drop the power level from like 100 to 55 and lose two mega hash maybe. So it's really not power sensitive like uh, Ravencoin is. But yeah, it, it definitely, definitely is limited. So I have the Zotac uh, Twin Edge OC 3060 Ti light hash rate. If anybody has, I mean, any 3060 Ti, but if they have specifically that one non light hash rate, Write down in the comments, I'm really interested to see uh, what performance you get on Ergo because um, from what I read, it's really a light hash rate thing and not really a, uh, what type of GPU it is or whatever, it's a Zotac or this or that, or even the memory type. So I have Hynix memory uh, on this card, but from my read, if it's Samsung, Micron, whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, this seems to be the light hash rate limiter uh, affecting the performance. So... Uh, that's my conclusion for now for the test. I wouldn't say it's definitive, but that's my theory based off uh, the data I'm seeing in front of my eyes. So, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so a quick wrap up here. Uh, fortunately, it's pretty disappointing. We, as we believe, this card is, you know, limited on Ergo. It's okay. We got it mining on Ravencoin. That's what I want to do anyway, so it's not really that big of a bummer. Um, I'd still be curious to know about you guys uh, in the community. If you have this card, but non-light hash rate, um, what's your maximum performance? And, you know, with what overclocks do you get that? Uh, I'd be curious to try it out. Uh, but from what I read online, I'm not the only one to have this issue. So, um, yeah. Uh, take care, guys. And um, be back in the next video. I'll give you a little sneak peek of uh, what I have coming. Oh, what's that? I wonder.